and McGee is coming on strong. And I saw Robbie come, and I said, oh, boy. I don't know if Sharp's going to have enough to hold him up. It was just a, a thrilling race to be a part of. I mean, it was, I was on the edge of my seat, and at times I was just freaking. McGee has got him by a half a car length. Can he pull away? No, he had not pulled away. I'm not sure he still got him. He doesn't. <laughs> Scott Sharp has the advantage as they come down for the white flag. One to go, a mile and a half left in Texas. Really, I was catching him, and I, I came up to him like he was tied to a stake, but I just could not get around him. He was holding the low line. We're on the last lap of the race. The last lap of the race, a half a lap to go. Get McGee him. and Scott Sharp get in battle him. for the lead and the win in Texas. Get I'm thinking I want to win my first IRL race. Here it is. I don't believe it. Scott Sharp comes down and wins it. I just held it down the whole time, every lap. Wow. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, welcomes you live to Texas Motor Speedway and the Casino Magic 500, the fifth race of the 2001 Indy Racing League season on a beautiful night in Texas, about 15 miles north of Fort Worth. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jenkins. Well, the Indy 500 is history, and it's time now to move along to the next IRL race here at Texas. And this race pays just as many points toward the championship as Indianapolis did. It's the eighth time that the IRL has competed here, and yes, it is the scene of the closest finish in history a year ago. Scott Sharp won that race. However, Thursday night in qualifying, he ended up just a little bit short as his Kelly Racing teammate, Mark Dismore, took pole position honors. And he will lead the other 23 to the green flag in just a few minutes. With Dismore on the grid, here's Jack Aroot. And Bob, this is the same sort of scenario that occurred at this racetrack. Team Kelly sweeping the front spots back in 1999. Mark, how does the fact that flanking you on the outside of the front row is a teammate, Scott Sharp, affect the way you will start this race? Not really, Jack. I mean, we want to kick his butt just like everybody else's. We just got to get a good start here for Kelly Racing. Good, clean start. And hopefully we'll both run uh, 200 laps of hard racing tonight. Vince Welch is the third time in Team Kelly's entire career that they have had both cars on the front row. Well, Jack, Greg Ray hasn't had much to smile about this week. In fact, his 20th starting position is his worst since 1997. But his car was very fast in practice and is thought to have one of the fastest race cars tonight. Greg, how aggressive will you be from the 20th position at the beginning of the race? Well, it's a long race, and there's a lot of guys in front of me that are slower. And uh, we think we have our car sorted out. So uh, we'll just take our time, and uh, if it looks good, we'll go there. That's Greg Gray. Don't expect him to be 20th for long. Bob? All right, thanks very much, Vince. I'm joined by former Indy 500 Rookie of the Year, Larry Rice. 24 degrees of banking, high speeds, a lot of G-forces on these drivers. Tough on them. This is a very tough racetrack. It's so competitive. They run so close to each other the whole race that they're only inches apart. That means mentally they cannot make a mistake. They have to concentrate 110% every time they go around this racetrack. And physically, they're pulling over four Gs through every corner. If you're not in good physical shape, you're going to be in big trouble long before this race is over. Well, while some drivers like Greg Ray had difficulty qualifying on Thursday night, one driver who didn't, Eddie Cheever Jr. He's been fast since practice began. He'll start third tonight, equaling his best qualifying effort ever in the IRL. Once again, here's Jack Aroot. And it is a brand new edition of the Infinity 35A that Eddie Cheever brings to the Texas Motor Speedway. Eddie, the fact that you've got to stay so focused and concentrate for two hours where does frustration come into play in this race? It shouldn't come into play anywhere. We're at such high speeds here. There's so much banking that it is very difficult to keep your mind not focused on the car that's ahead of you. And hopefully today will be the first day of the start of our championship because the beginning of the year has not been very positive for us. Bobby's looking to change things around and says this Infinity Power Plant is really potent. And Larry and I will be joined in the booth tonight, as usual, by Jason Priestley. And Jason, these drivers have had very little practice time. Bob, once again, the weather has been a factor here this weekend. Rain shortened the practice on Thursday. It interrupted practice yesterday. That means a lot of drivers and teams are still looking for the right setup. Now, Scott Sharp and Mark Dismore obviously very happy with theirs. Davey Hamilton and Al Unser Jr., though, told me they're very unhappy with theirs. 
Now, you add to that the fact that we had 20 cars in our final practice session, all turn laps within a second of each other. It's going to be a wild night here in Texas, Bob. Indeed it is. And Vince Welch, A.J. Foyt, is running two cars here tonight. That's right. One of them is Donnie Beachler, and he's living a racer's dream. A.J. put him in a ride a month ago at Indianapolis when he had no ride, and now A.J.'s given Donnie the call again this week to run here at Texas. Donnie, how can you thank A.J. Foyt? Well, I think uh, a victory would be good for both of us right now since we're on a, a tight budget. But, uh, you know, I, I really don't know how to thank a guy like that. He's uh, he stepped up to the plate and he's, he's given me an opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, I, I'm just uh, very grateful right now for the opportunity. This is just the second race of the season for you. Do you have a little extra nerves right now as you get ready to go running? Well, actually, I've got a pretty good race car that uh, that kind of calms my nerves a little bit. And when you got AJ on your radio, helping you out that uh, gives you a little more confidence so uh, I feel pretty good right now makes a big difference Donnie Beachler in the 11 car Bob Jenkins total of 24 cars are getting set to go 200 laps here on this one and a half mile high bank facility at Texas ESPN Speed World coverage of the Indy Racing League's Texas 500 is being brought to you by Delphi Automotive Systems. Driving tomorrow's technology. By Firestone, America's tire since 1900. Dedicated to making it right. By Infinity, introducing the more powerful Infinity QX4. And by Frostbrew Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are, Hey, beer man. The cars have just rolled off the grid. Three more up laps and then we'll go green. Here's the starting lineup for tonight's Texas 500 here at Texas Motor Speedway. The front row, Team Kelly, Mark Dismore, his fourth career pole, and the defending champion of the race, Scott Sharp. In row number two, Eddie Cheever Jr. and Sam Hornish, the current point leader in the IRL. The third row, Shige Hattori, his second top five qualifying effort, and Donnie Beachler alongside. The fourth row, Jeff Ward, who finished third back in 1998, and Robbie Buell. In the fifth row, Aliseo Salazar and Billy Boat, who won here in 98. In the sixth row, it's Alan Zer Jr., who finished third here a year ago, and Ayrton Dare. Row number seven, Buddy Lazier, the reigning IRL champion, and Felipe Giafoni. Row number eight, Jared Schrader and Buzz Calkins, who finished a strong fourth here last year. The ninth row consists of Bob Robbie McGee and Sarah Fisher, the runner-up at Miami. In the tenth row, it's Jacques Lazier and Greg Ray. Greg Ray, of course, lives right up the road in Plano, Texas, and enjoys spending a lot of time with the wife and kids playing with the toys. In row number 11, it's Didier Andre and Davey Hamilton, who was second here two years ago. And in the 12th row, Brandon Irwin and Billy Rowe. Those are the 24 starters tonight. Down to Jackaroo. A.J. Foyt finds himself by benefiting Donnie Beachler, creating a problem for pit stops. Point normally is a one-car team with Aliseo Salazar. He only has full-time staff to service one car. So during the green flag stops, his team is going to pit both Beachler and Aliseo Salazar. During the yellow flag stops, he's enlisted some fill-in people, Vince, but he says, I hope it goes green. I'll just make my team work double duty. Well, Jack, the last time Scott Sharp started a race, he crashed in turn one on the very first lap of the Indianapolis 500. You know that old saying about falling off the horse? Well, Scott Sharp is thrilled and relieved to finally be back in the saddle tonight. The weather here, although we did have a forecast of possible showers, it's clear. The air temperature 90 degrees, the track temperature 118. That's kind of an average because the back stretch is in sunshine and the front stretch here is in shade. Here are the stories we'll be tracking for you during the course of tonight's race. We'll keep an eye on the track and what it does to the drivers. The drafting that we'll sure to see. A.J. Boyd's double pitting. Dismore and Sharp at the front of the field. There they are right now as they get set along with the others to take the green flag and 200 laps of racing. Now, Greg Ray starts back in 20th position. We expect him to move up quickly. We'll uh, bring this up when we have the drop of the green flag to show how many cars he passes. 
when the race gets underway. We expect him to make a charge toward the front. He had his uh, worst qualifying effort since 1997 at Vegas here on Thursday night and his third poorest qualifying effort ever in his IRL career. Wow, the field is lined up very, very nicely as they're led down the back stretch by the pace car. Team Kelly lined up very nicely with Dismore on the left of your screen, the right of your screen, and his teammate Scott Sharp on the left. Big crowd on hand here tonight as we get set for the fifth race of the IRL 2001 season. The Texas 500 is underway. see any Cheever snuck in under Scott Sharp on that start took the second position away going into turn one now Hornish goes by Sharp and Sharp seems to be uh, not up to speed yet here's Greg Ray as we see him down the back stretch coming up on some traffic and passing to the outside all the way through turns three and four as a matter of fact there he is on the outside of Felipe Giafoni it's Mark Dismore leading lap number one with Eddie Cheever Jr. second and then Sam Hornish running in third spot Shigei Hattori is fourth and Greg Ray moved up six positions on the first lap he's now 14th as he continues to move up through the field and the field once again staying together nicely through the third and fourth turns once again he's just passed another car in the third turn there he moves alongside Al Unser Jr. and passes him Look at the lead, Eddie Cheever on the outside of Mark Dismore. This turn one is very bumpy down there. Run on the outside, it looks like he's gonna be able to hang on, but still side by side. Eddie Cheever Jr. has been fast since the track opened for practice. And he is battling alongside Mark Dismore for the lead as they come through the quad oval and at the line, it is Cheever by about a car length. So two leaders already, Cheever is in front. I think Dismore decided just to let him go. You know, it's very early in the race. Oh, look at Hornish, look at Blood. Oh, he almost got to the wall. Holy cow, how close can you come to the wall without hitting it? Mark Dismore certainly was not expecting him to be out there. He moved up just a little bit too high, and Hornish almost touched the fence coming off the corner down there. Are you breathing, Jason? I'm like, uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is just what, to, just what we advertised it would be so far, isn't it, guys? Great racing so far. Hornish is now in second position. And by the way, Eddie Cheever is leading his first laps all year. It's the fifth event, however, that he has led here at Texas. Looks like Billy Boat's going to have a run on Salazar if he can catch up to him here. Oh, look at here comes Buell outside of Boat. Robbie Buell with the other Infinity powered car, the Team Purex machine. And Greg Ray picks up another position. He's already up into the top 10. <laughs> That's quite a charge. Well, we didn't expect anything else. That's Ward that he's on the outside of right now. So he is really picking his way through there in a hurry. And he picks up another one right beside Buddy Lazier there. Well, Lazier, he didn't quite make it around Lazier, but uh, he certainly had a run. And when he got out of the throttle just slightly, you can see that it cost him a lot of time, and he actually lost the position. Beachler running in the seventh position right behind Robbie Buell. There is Shigei Hattori and Robbie Buell, the fifth and sixth place cars, as they come down and complete lap number seven. Well, we haven't said a lot about Hattori, but he's done a great job here this weekend so far. As we see, the Ray has gotten around Ward now, so he is on the move. Fellas, this has been a matter of pride for Greg Ray and this crew after missing the setup during qualifying. How embarrassed was Greg Ray? When he showed up for some publicity photos, he brought a paper bag like the old New Orleans Saints fans used to do. Well, they certainly were. He was embarrassed. The whole team was embarrassed. They actually wouldn't, wouldn't tell us exactly what they did to mess up so badly, but they were certainly, uh, it was a huge mistake, whatever it was. Greg Ray battling Ayrton Dare now for the 10th position. And look at the pack of traffic down the backstretch. Billy Boat and Cheever has gained two positions since the drop of the green flag. Lazier is up four, Ray up nine, and Jacques Lazier and Davey Hamilton have also gained some spots since the green. Well, and Bob, uh, Eddie Cheever, as you mentioned, has gone up to the uh, first position to take the lead. Off 
to a great start, but what this team is most concerned about is the finish. It's finished just one race all season long, and that was a ninth place stop at Homestead. These guys need a strong run today to get back into the championship. So with Cheever running strong early, they want to keep their uh, eye on the finish most of all. Now we're on board with Eddie Cheever as he has about a one and a quarter second lead over Sam Hornish. A little bit loose. He's a little bit loose, boy. If he gets that thing fixed, everybody's going to be in real trouble. <laughs> That's for sure. Hornish, then Sharp, Dismore, who led the first few laps, has moved back to fourth position, then Hattori, Buell, Boat, Dare, Beachler, and Greg Ray. Those are the top ten at the moment. Twelve laps about to be completed here at Texas Motor Speedway in the Texas 500. We'll be right back. Back at Texas Motor Speedway, Eddie Cheever Jr. has lengthened his lead to over two and a third seconds. Cheever has something to prove, it would appear, here tonight. Now, we're on board with Sam Hornish, who is running in second spot, looking back on Scott Sharp, who is, as you can see, very close behind, in fact, sometimes to the side of Hornish, and then behind Sharp is Mark Dismore. This is the battle for second. Bob, one of the things that Sam Hornish has spotted Poncho Carter is telling Sam to do is make Scott Sharp pass him on the outside. Every lap he says to young Hornish, make him work the outside, don't let him on the inside. Well, obviously the reason for that is it's farther around the outside. If he's running faster, then he should be able to take the long route and go around you. He can catch him, he can run right behind him, but he cannot or has not been able to go around the outside yet. Scott Sharp with such a disappointing effort at the Indianapolis 500 after starting on the pole. And for that matter, Mark Dismore had a very disappointing day, too, because he appeared to be in a position to win the race when he had gearbox problems. And here is Sharp to the inside now of Sam Hornish. So get behind, get back in behind can with drafting. That's Poncho Carter, former race driver himself. And he, Sam didn't do what Pancho told him to do and don't let him pass to the inside. Sharp did, and now Hornish is back to third and has Desmore breathing down his neck. Well, as long as he can stay in that draft, as long as he can keep up with him, there's really no harm done. Long way to go. One position's not real critical at this point. Well, the two-minute drill is back and better. Now easier to play at home with enhanced TV and new celebrities and athletes to ask the questions. Join host Kenny Maine as the tournament progresses Tuesday nights on ESPN at 7 and again at 7.30. If you got the answer, for more, log on to ESPN.com. Riding along with Mark Dismore, who's in fourth position, about three and three-quarter seconds behind the leader of the race, Eddie Cheever, Jr. You can see you may wonder one of the reasons why Mark Dismore has backed off just a bit is his car developed immediately at the drop of the green flag of push. He's been working the bars on board to make adjustments. He's satisfied now, but I would expect him to make some changes during the first pit stop. I'd say he's satisfied. You can see him closing up on Sam Hornish here, guys. It looks like he's going to make a run at it himself. And let's see if... Mark has success on the high side of the racetrack. Nope, going to have to back off and uh, try it again, hopefully getting that inside line. You can see everything. everything's kind of settled down a little bit. Uh, everybody kind of falling in line, trying to find out, you know, just where the car is working, where they can make the pass. And that's exactly what Dismore's doing right now. He tried the outside. That didn't work. So he's going to try, probably do the same thing Sharp did, which is go to the inside. Oh, no, nope. Can't mark it right there. Oh, Although, looks like Hornish is giving him room. Yeah, it sure does. But Mark cannot take advantage of that slight bit of racetrack that Sam offered. And now he does it outside. again. And this time... Outside. Dismore is successful. Outside. 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 Well, that is outstanding racing. I mean, it really speaks to the professionalism of these drivers to be able to run wheel to wheel like that. And we have our first caution of the race as debris has yeah, been reported debris on the, back on the racetrack. On the back car pull out. So with just car. about 25 laps completed now, Eddie Cheever Jr. had a big lead, but all that goes away as the caution flag comes out. Sharp second, Dismore third, then Hornish, and Robbie Buell in fifth position.
Eddie Cheever Jr. Makes his home in Orlando, Florida, was the 1998 Indy 500 winner, and right now is in the lead here. However, with the caution out, we do anticipate Cheever and others making pit stops. We have completed 26 laps, and indeed, here they come in for service for the first time. Wow, all the leaders are coming. It looks like everyone's going to try and stay, stay in the same pit window. At the top of your screen is Eddie Cheever Jr. and Scott Sharp is at the bottom. Second purple guy, get ready, cut, cut right now the pit boxes here are 11 feet shorter than they are in indianapolis brian barnhart warned them make sure you give everybody plenty of room because you don't have nearly the room here it, you had it, 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 it. Oh. Oh. well cheever got beat out of the pits by a couple of cars it looks like Jacques Lazier chose not to make a pit stop that time, so he is the leader of the race. We'll be right back. The Texas 500, 29 laps old here at Texas Motor Speedway. We go down to Jackaroo. Bob, in this case, it was not a situation that Scott Sharp wanted to see a yellow flag. Team Kelly, both for Sharp and the former pole sitter, Mark Dismore, had determined to make this a fuel conservation race until the last third of the event. But as soon as the leader, Eddie Cheever, pulled onto pit road, they had no choice, Vince Welch. Well, A.J. Foyt's two cars came into the pits as well, and Jack reported at the beginning of the telecast that they may be using one crew or at least a kind of a hodgepodge of a second crew. It was a very clean stop for both Aliseo Salazar and Donnie Beachler. They both came in at the same time, and A.J.'s grandson, A.J. the fourth, changing the front left on Donnie Beachler's car. <laughs> Well, they actually went out and got a uniform out of his souvenir trailer out in the parking lot <laughs> to put on some of these guys. One of them's got a power team uniform on, which is at least a couple of years old. That's AJ's right. already signed it. Somebody, somebody's going to get a souvenir that's been well used. <laughs> <laughs> now, neither Jacques Lazier nor Buzz Calkins made a pit stop that time, so they are shown as first and second. Then comes Cornish. Ayrton Dare is running fourth, and then Scott Sharp. And Ayrton Dare went in eighth and came out second. He's in fourth place on the track, but he was the second guy out of the pits. Boy, he got a great pit stop. And that is the teammate to the driver who is currently leading that you see right there. That is Jacques Lazier in the classmates.com g force He runs for Team Extreme, which is headquartered not too far from here in Rockwell, Texas. And a lot of his future depends on this race. I think that's one reason he stayed out there. He wants to show, get them some publicity for classmates, because if he does well here, they're going to come along and stay with him for a few more races. It's a really neat website. You can register and uh, match up with former classmates. Here's the green flag, and we are back to racing on lap number 32. And Buzz Calkins moves to the outside of Jacques Lazier. And Ayrton Dare just made a move and dove inside Sam Hornish. Dare looking pretty racy here. This is the best I've seen Dare look for quite long some for quite some time. He was good at Indy last year. He really hasn't run all that good since then. But right now he's taking the lead. Look at the teammates oh. racing wheel to wheel. This is outstanding. Team Extreme one and two. Ayrton Dare, Jacques Lazier, Sam Hornish back in third, and then Calkins in fourth as they complete the lap. This is an important outing for Team Extreme because they are a Lone Star-based operation. They brought a lot of people to this race, and they want a breakout event for both Dare and Lazier. Eddie Cheever Jr. running in fifth position. You see some of his telemetry with the speed and the amount of throttle and the lateral G's he's pulling. Sharp, of course, led, or rather Cheever led, 25 laps of this race, but relinquished it during the pit stops. Yeah, he was very upset during the pit stop. He uh, he had one person telling him to go, one person telling him to stop, and he was uh, a little confused as to what he was supposed to do. Guy Jacques Lazier, as you noted, did not come in for the pit stop. Jonathan Bird, who's part of this uh, Jonathan Bird Team Extreme effort, said, we don't necessarily believe we're out of sequence. We were only a half a tank into our fuel. So they believe they can get another yellow before uh, the actual pit stop sequence runs out or the pit stop window closes. So they believe they're right in, uh, in within the window and could maybe make one less stop in this race than the others who did come in already. It's just about 8.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 here in Texas, and we have one heck of a battle going on at Texas Motor Speedway. Look at the competition. That's fourth on back. 
Texas Motor Speedway has provided some of the greatest racing we have seen in the Indy Racing League, and we're seeing it again tonight. The leader is Ayrton Dare. Eddie Cheever Jr. has now moved back up to second position, then Hornish, then Jock Lazier, Calkins, Buell, Sharp, Boat, Giafoni, and Greg Ray in the top ten. And look at Eddie Cheever Jr. as he tries to go back in front, down the back stretch, wheel to wheel with Ayrton Dare. And as they go into turn number three, Cheever has the lead back. Boy, has he got a pony under him tonight. That thing has been fast since he unloaded it day one down here in Texas, and it doesn't look like it's getting any worse as the race goes on. He Larry, said yesterday, the only problem that Eddie Cheever has had thus far tonight is his water bottle is inoperative. He told the team, my mouth is so parched, I feel like it's the Sahara Desert. I guess that makes him thirsty for the win. <laughs> oh, Jack. Well, he came in yesterday and said, hey, he, he got out of the car. He's so excited. He said, what a stud, huh? This is really cool. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's nice to see the Infinity running up front. Those the, the Infinity guys have been working really hard to get that 35A up to speed and have the reliability that it needs. And it seems like they're, uh, they're certainly making a dent in it, Bob. And we will go next Sunday to the racetrack that has provided the only win for the Infinity engine, that being Pikes Peak International Raceway. That'll be next Sunday as the Indy Racing League season rolls along. Here's the latest update from on board with Eddie Cheever. He just radioed to Owen Snyder, and I quote, the car is so friggin' good, it's scary. <laughs> Well, he is so fast, it's scary, as he pulls away now from Dare and Hornish. They're second and third, as Hornish has a good run now on Dare, coming on to the quad oval here. But Dare holds him off for the moment. Well, Dare, he gained a lot of spots early in this race. He was fast right from the get-go, and with that pit stop, it's really put him in a position to be right up front for the rest of this race. And you can see on these in-car shots just how bumpy this track is. When we go through three and four here, you'll be able to see the car is bouncing around. You can see what's going on the in-car shop, but that's yeah, really difficult for the drivers. It makes it very difficult to handle the cars at these speeds and with these G-lugs. Amazing stuff. That's Ayrton Dare up ahead. When he was leading, he was up front for the first time in an IRL race since Las Vegas in the spring of last year. Great racing going on. Here is Hornish once again trying to move to the outside of Dare. And right behind Sam Hornish, by the way, is the other Infinity-powered car, Robbie Buell. Yeah, he's moved up very close to these guys. He's been gaining on him. Pancho Carter told Sam Hornish a while ago, the 24 is moving up on you, so Sam's moved to the outside to try to make the pass. He hasn't been able to do it yet, though. Well, ESPN is giving you the chance to win a ride in an Indy car and a trip to next year's Indianapolis 500. We'll be revealing the Indy All Access Sweepstakes Driver of the Day later in today's event, so stay tuned. And look at this. Guess who's right up amongst the big boys here? That's <laughs> Greg Ray, started 20th, now up there challenging for the lead, not the lead for the second place. And uh, he restarted the race in 13th position. And here he comes up to challenge the fourth place car of Robbie Buell. On board with Sam Hornish once again. Eddie no, Cheever just outside. driving away. The interval between Cheever and second place, Dare, is 2.13 outside, seconds. And outside, here's outside. Buell going to the outside of Hornish. Outside. Got another one looking. And that racetrack is very bumpy high down there in one and two. So Buell did a nice job running that high group through one and two where it is very, very rough. It is Robbie Buell who has the third position, and he's going to now take a shot at Ayrton Dare, run in second. That'll give Infinity first and second positions. Uh, you, can, you can see just at the bottom of your shot there, Eddie Cheever exited the shot. That's how big of a lead he's opened up. Yeah, yep. More than two and a half seconds now. Wheel to wheel for second spot. Buell and Dare, and Buell will take second. Dari gave him a lot of room. He held the car down very close to the inside of the racetrack, making him go around the outside. But Buell had enough uh, horsepower and enough speed to do that. <laughs> well, by, uh, Larry, Ayrton, Dari, they're very happy with the way the car's running. They didn't make any changes during that pit stop when they came in ninth and went out fourth. They just changed the Firestones and added fuel. But he really likes the way the race car's handling right now. And Mark Guida, his engineer, was talking to Ayrton about it's a long race. And uh, Ayrton came back over the radio and said, I just like running up toward the front. <laughs> I'm sure he's not going to mind losing one position. 
Once again, we're seeing drivers battle for position side by side all the way through the corner. This is what open wheel racing is all about right here tonight. And we are coming up on the one quarter mark as 49 laps have been completed. Eddie Cheever Jr. has a three and a half second lead on Robbie Buell. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. Bob Jenkins along with Larry Rice, Jason Priestley, Vince Welch, and Jack Aroon. 52 laps are completed. Now we update you on our stories. The track, well, yes, it isn't any bumpier now than it was at the start of the race, but it is a factor, and we've seen a lot of drafting going on out there. Greg Ray started 20th, just took over third a few minutes ago. Dismore and Sharp are back to 13th and 6th. And A.J. Foyt's duo, Salazar and Beechler, are currently running 14th and 16th. They both pitted under caution with no major problems during the pit stop. On board here was Sam Hornish, who's running in fourth. And Bob, we went the first 49 laps this race before anybody on the racetrack got lapped. Shigeo Hattori, though, on that first pit stop, had a very long pit stop and lost a couple laps, in case you're wondering what happened to him, since he was running so well there early. Billy Rowe is a lap down, Hattori is two laps down, and Brandon Irwin, who is from nearby Denton, Texas, is currently six laps down. Here's Sam Hornish. He won the first two races of the year. That has helped put him into the points lead. And look at the amount of laps that he led in those first two races has completed 99.4% of the laps here in 2001. You know, those are impressive stats for such a young man. He's, uh, he's really proved himself to be a, a true competitor this year. It looks like that he is going, coming up on Greg Ray in the battle for third position. What happened there? Greg Ray had to lift a little bit. That's the reason he moved to the bottom of the racetrack. He knew he didn't have the straightaway speed that Hornish had, so he thought, if he's going to pass me, I'm going to make him go by on the outside. Once he got the momentum back up, he kind of gained that, uh, that little bit of space back on Sam Hornish. Guys, keep an eye on Robbie Buell. Currently, he's running in second, but they're having a little bit of a voltage problem in the car, and right now they're discussing whether or not they might need to bring him in and do a battery change. So keep an eye on the 24 car. Right now, running strong at second, but that might start to fade. Well, he just lost second, Vince, as Greg Ray took over that spot, and now Ray, who again started in 20th position, is up to second. And a couple of guys that did not pit on that uh, yellow flag that we had now are going to have to and the first to enter pit road among the two that stayed out buzz Calkins, jock lazier had to pit on lap number 55 and this is lap 58 that Calkins is pitting on it was a calculated gamble that brad Calkins, buzz's dad elected to make along with david cripps the engineer and they just rolled the dice and this time it didn't work out fellas and that's the chance you take Buzz Calkins had such a... Bar, Sam, you're in the middle. You have the white jacket to go clockwise. He had such a great run at Indianapolis. Buzz Calkins did, ending up in the 12th position. As you can see, he is coming back out onto the racetrack, joining with the rest of the field down the back stretch, focusing in once again on the second and third place and fourth place cars of Ray Buell and Hornish. Scott Sharp back there in fifth spot. Eddie Cheever Jr. continues to lead now almost six seconds ahead. Cheever has led four previous races here at Texas for a total of 50 laps, and he's already led 50 here tonight. Well, tonight on ESPN2 at 10.30 Eastern Time, Ronald Cerritos and the Earthquakes try to stop Kobe Jones, Luis Hernandez, and the Los Angeles Galaxy in a battle for bragging rights in the Golden State. Major League Soccer tonight on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. And there you're riding along with Scott Sharp just for a second as he's uh, gaining on those guys running second, third, and fourth right in front of him. Looks like Ayrton Dari has gotten by underneath Robbie Buell. And, and this is our leader. He's taking the outside and lapping cars. He's the uh, man. He's been fast. Just went around Billy Rowe for the second time. Cheever with a six-second lead now. There you can see Cheever's the 51. Ray and Buell two and 24. Once again, the news is not good for Robbie Buell. After running up in second position, he brings the Team Purex car into the pits. And the 
one of the two Infinity 35A engines will not win here tonight. Well, and remember, Bob, uh, how disappointed Robbie was when he was running so strongly at Indianapolis, and they felt as though they had another car capable of winning here tonight. But as Buell sits in his car and they work on it, he just shook his head in amazed at disappointment. Jack Aroot. Well, Vince Welch, the other Infinity Eddie Cheever working the outside on Sarah Fisher, but he has just radioed into his crew. The engine doesn't sound right. They've checked the onboard telemetry and radio back to him. Everything looks A-OK. -okay. Besides that, he says the car's wicked loose. He doesn't like the way the engine sounds, Larry. Well, that could be big time trouble. The driver's usually the first to know when something's going wrong because you can you can sense it. You sit in there, you're a part of that car. Everything that goes on, you feel and you hear instantaneously. And I don't care what the telemetry says, sometimes you can hear things like that when it's very, very slight. And we may have seen an indication right there of how perhaps the car is not as good as it was because he was unable to lap Sarah Fisher, and so she stays the last car on the lead lap in 17th position. Here comes Eddie for another run at it. Allenser Jr. has already gone a lap down in 18th spot. Well, he's still running over 215 miles an hour, uh, but Greg Ray and Scott Sharp are both running faster, and they're running in second and third right now. There is Sarah Fisher. She got that Kroger sponsorship, I think, uh, through a sponsorship on a actually a sprint car a couple of years ago, or last year. Kroger sponsored the sprint car. It worked so well, they decided to go IndyCar racing. And what better person than Sarah Fisher? And that's, this is where she made her IRL debut in October of 1999. Here is Buddy Lazier running up there with Billy Boat and Mark Dismore on board with Mark. The pole sitter, he's running back in the 10th position currently. Yeah, he got out of the pits. Uh, was pretty far back and just really has kind of run where he came out. He hasn't been able to pass anybody. He hasn't really been. Oh, and we have a big time crash on the back stretch. Looks like that uh, it is Davey Hamilton involved along with Sarah Fisher. Yeah, Davey Hamilton, the yellow and red car that uh, appeared to have a lot of damage. Sarah Fisher's down to the inside. Um, the engine obviously stalled, so. I'm gonna need somebody to come and get me, but the front of the car just like seconds towed in. I had nowhere to go. There was stuff flying everywhere. Yeah, no, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't pick a good line there. Low is about as best as I can see. Well, it involves Jared Schrader, Davey Hamilton, and Sarah Fisher. They were all running right together in 16th, 17th, and 18th position when the uh, crash occurred. We see Davey Hamilton moving around in the cockpit. As a matter of fact, he's thrown out the steering wheel, so that is the best thing that we can see. Here is the crash. Well, they're taking them. Oh, contact was made between Schrader and uh, Sarah Fisher back there. She just kind of ran over some stuff, but Schrader and Hamilton, when they got together, let's see what happens as they, oh, oh Schrader. Uh, engine blue's blue. engine, yeah. look at that. Yeah. Everybody was a victim of circumstances right there. It wasn't anybody's fault. When that engine let go, Schrader couldn't do anything. Mm. Hamilton tried to go to the outside to miss him, but got caught up and into the fence. Boy, he took a ride. Larry. Yes, he did. And mm. you can see uh, that oil was just everywhere. Hamilton just barely clipped him, but boy, he backed into the fence very hard. Almost oh, gets upside man. down. He hit that wall a ton, and Sarah Fisher just got into the debris. Now, at regular speed, we're on board with Sarah Fisher. Slow down. Go low. Go low. Slow right down. Oh, wow. You're good. Watch out for the back behind and all the bends. You're out of sight. I assume you're okay. Man, oh, man. She hit that wheel. Wow. Like the, wow. That's that scary. Was, yeah. That is scary. That's why they get paid the big bucks. Let me tell you. <laughs> that Jared, was <laughs> Jared Schrader is out of the car. We know Sarah Fisher's okay, and we saw Davey Hamilton moving around. Those three involved in the crash. Back here at Texas where pit stops are being completed and cars moving out onto the racetrack once again. I think Allenser Jr. is going to make up a lost lap here because he made a quick pit stop and got out ahead of the uh, leader of the race. And so with the pace car picking up the leader, he's going to be able to come all the way around. Now we are under caution because of an accident back there in the backstretch involving Schrader, Hamilton, and Fisher. We're on board with Cheever. And, oh, this happened right ahead of him. Wow. 
Oh. He did. Wow. There was contact. You could hear the contact with the car. Wow. He's very lucky to make it through there. Here it is from another angle, and the accident up ahead right now, trying to dodge all of that debris. That's Davey Hamilton up there hitting the wall very, very hard. Down to Jackaroo. And Bob, one of the things that Eddie Cheever wanted to resolve after that yellow came out was getting in and out of the pits better. Here's the way Owen Snyder and Eddie have figured out Eddie Cheever's method to find his pit stop. Snyder says, look, there's a bunch of purple guys in front of us. When you see purple, turn left. That's exactly what Cheever did. The other concern, and this could cause problems during green, is the engine throttle hangs up at about 3,000 RPM. Got to be careful getting in and out of pit road in the low revs. Bob? So Eddie Cheever Jr. is out on the track after his pit stop, and Sarah Fisher is being towed toward her uh, pit area. And look at the big mark on the front of her car where she hit that tire. You know, that's just well, Bob, uh, extremely disappointing, not only for Sarah Fisher, but also for Davey Hamilton, who's making his 48th consecutive Indy Racing League start. But it was also a big day for Sam Schmidt Motorsports. It's a paralysis and disability day here at Texas Motor Speedway. And Sam Schmidt and the Paralysis Foundation were hosting 50 uh, to 100 guests and their families here today, hoping to have a long and uh, successful night at the Texas Motor Speedway, not to be this evening. Jack Aroot. So Vince Welch, what's it like to run 200 miles an hour at a place like Texas Motor Speedway or to travel around banking that's three stories tall? Tell you what, let's go on board with Eddie Cheever Jr. and find out. One of the most common questions that a racing driver gets when he comes to a place like Texas from the fans is how difficult is it physically to drive at a place like this? To put it in perspective, and we are pulling 4G in the corners, it's like having three bowling balls hooked up to the side of your helmet on the right-hand side, and you have to push back the other way. To do that for one lap really isn't that difficult. For 10 laps, it gets kind of difficult, but for the whole race, it takes a lot of physical training. There are a lot of things that the driver has to deal with at this race in Texas, but if you are not able to deal with that G-force, you will have a problem, and the difference between winning and not winning could be whether you've trained enough to carry these bowling balls around with you for two hours. I can't imagine running a race with three bowling balls hanging off the side of your head. And drivers for years and years have been trying to find a way to strengthen your neck muscles enough to withstand that kind of G-force. They never have come up with a very good way. The best way to do it is just race and race and race. <laughs> Sarah Fisher out of her car as repairs are made. Greg Ray has picked up the lead of the race. Vince, we see you there. Go ahead. Sarah Fisher discussing uh, some of the problems uh, with the race car and the situation that uh, she was involved in, doing damage to the front right. She got out of the car as they're working on the nose. Sarah, exactly what happened from your perspective? Well, the yellow car, I don't know who it was, but uh, they just got loose and lost it and came around with their right rear looks like and tagged the wall and just spun. And the car on the inside of them um, got them, collected them, and then things were flying everywhere. There was no but what all are they going to have to try to get done to your car to get you back out? Well, basically, it's like the other side of Atlanta. I mean, the left side of Atlanta, we broke some of the A-arms, and they did the same thing, except for it's on the right side, but it's definitely fixable. Sarah Fisher, she's going to be back out, but she's not going to be back out in contention to win. That's the second time this has happened to Sarah Fisher, guys. You remember in Atlanta, the same thing happened yep. during that big accident. She hit a bunch of debris on the track. That's one lucky little girl right there that nothing bad has happened to her. I'm telling you. Well, the good thing news is she is okay after that crash. Greg Ray is the leader of the race after 78 laps. Cheever Jr., Giafoni, Sharp, and Hornish complete the top five. Welcome back to the Texas 500 for the Indy Racing League. Ray, Cheever, Giafoni, Hornish, and Sharp are the top five. We are under caution because of the accident involving Schrader, Hamilton, and Fisher. Now, let's get you up to date on what's happened so far. On lap number three, Sam Hornish Jr. took our breath away. He went to the outside of Mark Dismore and got oh so close to that outside wall on the backstretch, but took second. On the 36th lap of the race, we went back to green after a caution period for debris, and we saw 10 cars hanging right together in the draft. 
On the 43rd lap of the race, Greg Ray continued to show his strength. He started back in 20th position, but began to move up once again through the traffic. And then on the 52nd lap, he and Sam Hornish engaged in some wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat on the one and a half mile, 24 degree banks of Texas Motor Speedway. Lap number 58. This is when Robbie Buell had some problems and had to drop out of the race. The 73rd lap was when the crash occurred. Jarrett Schrader takes Davey Hamilton into the wall with him, and then Sarah Fisher ran into debris on the backstretch. Davey Hamilton has been taken into the infield care center for evaluation, and there is his race car. Sam Schmidt Motorsports picking up some sponsorship from BH1, but that Delara is mangled. As a matter of fact, the front part of that race car is just completely torn away. Now, Hamilton is a, a conscious, but is complaining of some leg pain, and you can certainly see why when you take a look at that race car. Sarah Fisher, meanwhile, awaits her repairs to be made before getting back into action. Still under caution here at Texas Motor Speedway, the two severely wrecked cars are being taken back to the garage area as the Indy Racing League has completed 82 laps of the Texas 500. Before we had this crash, the green speed, green average speed was 188 and a half miles an hour. Jack? Well, Bob, Greg Ray has worked his way to the front from that 10th row of the start, but he has done it by abusing his Firestone Firehawk tires. The right front tire right there coming off the car beginning to show some signs of blistering. Now, the way you cure that problem, if you've abused the tires, just change your tire pressures by about a pound. That's what Greg Ray will do during his next stop. It's not a question of the tire being bad. It's a question of just beating it to death, trying to come from the back to the front, Vince. We do have an update on Davey Hamilton and Jared Schrader. Jared Schrader is okay. He'll be out of the infield care center momentarily. Davey Hamilton will be taken to Parkland Hospital via helicopter, complaining of, as you had already noted, a pain in the foot area. They will take him to the hospital, but he is awake and alert, and we'll have a more detailed update from Dr. Henry Bach in just a moment. Davey Hamilton is the only driver to start every single IRL race since the series began, and we hope that that streak can continue you next Sunday at Pikes Peak but if it doesn't we can certainly understand why because that car was just absolutely destroyed yeah, and that was really a, a th those kind of accidents are the ones that really just tear the heart out of your team you know he was completely an innocent bystander you know the car he's racing next to blows his engine the oil goes in front of his tires he spins out in front of you, you really got nowhere to go it's very frustrating as a driver it's frustrating as a team and uh, really unfortunate for Davey and Sam Schmidt and uh, we wish him a speedy recovery and hope he's okay Took Greg Ray 67 laps to move from 20th to first, and that's uh, that's not very many laps when you consider that he was running in the top three for about 50 of those 67. <laughs> and we still have 18 cars on the lead lap here as we approach lap number 85. So and Bob, what uh, Daryl Safi just radioed to Greg Ray as he said, "Look, don't worry about the tire, but I got a suggestion to you, Greg." Try not to abuse them just so much now that you're out front. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Greg Ray leads at Texas. Green in a moment. Our ESPN Speed World coverage of the Texas 500 for the Indy Racing League is being brought to you by Pennzoil. Protection under the toughest driving conditions. By Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile dealers. By Delphi Automotive Systems. Driving tomorrow's technology and by Infinity, introducing the more powerful Infinity QX4. Beautiful evening here in the Fort Worth, Texas area, Texas Motor Speedway. We are still running under the caution flag because of the accident we had back in the backstretch. They're the top five right now. Greg Ray is the leader with Eddie Cheever Jr. who has led the most laps so far in second position. Cheever has led 64 laps. Greg Ray has led 11. And there are three others who have led so far. Ayrton Tare, five. Jacques Lazier, four. And Dismore, two. Sunday, ABC Sports brings you the exciting final round action from the FedEx St. Jude Classic. Bob Estes leads after the third round. You can see it Sunday live at 3 o'clock Eastern and noon Pacific on ABC. 
86 laps have now been completed. Let's get an update on Eddie Cheever from Jackaroot. Well, we told you about the tire situation with the leader, Greg Ray, and the tire situation for second place, Eddie Cheever Jr. Tire wear is great, according to Owen Snyder. In fact, he says it's so good, told Eddie, don't be afraid to lean on it hard on the start. Well, we'll have one more lap to go under caution, and then we'll go back to racing. By the way, Robbie Buell, who was very much a contender earlier, came in for a pit stop, was in 10 laps. He is back in the race, but 10 laps down. And other cars who are not on the lead lap, Billy Rowe, Shigea Tori, who's two laps down. And now we're having some cars move around the uh, the other, the leader of the race, and that's going to put uh, Allen's her junior back on the lead lap in 15 spots. So 15 cars are on the lead lap as we get set to go back to racing. We heard Jack say earlier that they were going to change one pound in the right front of that car. If you change one pound, it also changes the weight, and it could make as much as 50 pounds difference in a spring rate when you change the pound of one pound bear. So that's the other reason they sometimes will lower or raise the air pressure in those tires. Down to Jack on uh, Mark Dismore. Well, as we told you, both for Mark Dismore and for Scott Sharp, the key is conserving fuel. Right now, don't count them out of the race. They just want to ride for a while as the green comes out again. Greg Ray leads him down. Cheever. Then Felipe Giafoni, the rookie, is running in third spot right now with Hornish and Sharp also in the top five. And Jeff Ward moves up to fifth position, passing Scott Sharp. And you can see all that dust back there. That's oil dry from that crash. There wasn't anything that came out of the cars. That was oil dry, and it wasn't really any problem. And now Ayrton Dare moves around Scott Sharp. So Scott loses two positions here in the first three quarters of the first lap under green. And Cheever closes in on the leader, Greg Ray. Well, this ought to be a good battle here. These two guys both run very, very well. Ray always runs well here. Cheever, all of a sudden, this weekend has really been fast here in Texas. So this ought to be a great battle between these two guys. Well, Ray has led in four of the five races this year, and this is also the fourth race he has led at Texas Motor Speedway. Here that's Sam Hornish there is going to have a shot at Felipe Giafoni, the outstanding rookie. That's a battle for third position. Here they come. That's Giafoni, then Hornish. And then right behind him is Ward. On board with uh, Sam. And I think Ward seems to be one of the fastest cars after that pit stop. He really had got around a couple of cars there early and seems to be really on the move here in this uh, segment of the race. And we're approaching the halfway point in less than nine laps. We'll be halfway in the 200 lap race here tonight. Hornish making a move to the inside, but that allows Jeff Ward to get a good run on the outside, and Jeff Ward takes fourth position. Meanwhile, back up front, still a great battle for the lead between Greg Ray and Eddie Cheever, but Cheever hasn't been able to get the advantage from Greg. Well, he moved to the bottom, then he moved to the top. He tried to get a run down that last straightaway. Hasn't been able to do that yet, but he's, uh, he's certainly used a lot of the racetrack looking for a place where he can gain an advantage on Greg Ray. Larry, do you remember before that last stop, Eddie Cheever said the car was way loose. They made a change in tire pressures, and now he radios in the car's perfect. By the way, Jeff Ward has gotten around Felipe Giafoni, so Ward now moves to third. Here comes Cheever looking to the inside in turn three. Great battle between these two drivers here. Well, Eddie Cheever, he wants the lead. He, he really feels like he's got the car to win this race. He wants to lead every lap. He's really excited about uh, how good his race car has been. But so far, Greg Ray, even though he had a lousy qualifying lap, he's been running very good here in the race. Now Cheever will look to the outside, but settles back in behind Greg. It's safe to say that the outing for Eddie Cheever at Indianapolis Motor Speedway was certainly disappointing. Since that day, this team did no testing. Instead, they worked on their aero package, trying to make the car as slick as possible. From my liking, it looks as if they've done their homework for a super slick track like Texas. And you can see he's moved around a lot. He moved inside, outside. He's, he's looks like he's actually trying to get a little run. Now he uses that oh, draft yeah. and moves out. Just not quite enough of draft, though, to pull himself up alongside of Greg Ray. He is close, though. They run through the second corner and down the back stretch. 
Cheever now will look to the inside of Greg Ray, but there's nothing there. Well, I think he's just trying to worry that position out of him. I'm not real sure. <laughs> like Michael Andretti did at Indianapolis. Exactly. Just worry him enough and maybe he'll move over and let me go by. You know, this is something that we talk about a lot in racing. It's really easy to catch up to a guy, but not so easy to actually get around him because a guy who's leading can drive a pretty wide car when he wants to. Well, and Greg Ray is using that inside groove. Right down the straightaway, he's right on the bottom of the racetrack. He wants to make Cheever go around the outside if he's going to pass him. Larry, any Cheever told me earlier this year that if it was a year ago, he could have already made the pass on Greg Ray because he felt Greg Ray was just fast but not smart. But he says that somewhere along the line, the kid from Plano, Texas, has become a thinking man's race driver. Cheever says he's one of the toughest guys to pass now because he knows how to cover the spot. Well, you can see right there he is covering the spot. He didn't stay on the bottom of the racetrack. When he knew Cheever was on the outside of him, he moved up about a half a car width. That makes Cheever have to go farther around the outside and uh, makes a long, long way to make the pass. Next time around will be the halfway mark. 100 laps completed, 100 to go here at Texas Motor Speedway. Greg Ray, who started 20th, is the leader. Eddie Cheever Jr. is in second position. Then Ward, Giafoni, and Hornish. There have been five different leaders and five lead changes in the first half of this race. One big crash. Davey Hamilton, Jared Schrader, and Sarah Fisher involved. Davey Hamilton has been airlifted to Parkland Hospital for... Looks like left red, guys. Left red. For some work. Oh, and Cheever all of a sudden Sorry. comes into the pits. Oh, on his radio there, he was asking if his tires were okay. They said his left rear... They have... Uh, they have a flat left rear. They have sensors on there. They can tell when a tire is going down. They knew right away when he said it got loose, it got loose. And they looked. They saw he had a tire going down, so they pulled him in right away. Tough break. Boy, he got off the throttle quickly, though, and down into the pit lane where the speed limit is 60 miles an hour. Quick work. 10.5 seconds. And Eddie Cheever Jr. is back in the race, but he's going to lose a lap. Well, his best, he, all he can hope for now is that everybody else has to run another 25 or 6 laps and make a green lap or green flag pit stop. If they don't, then he's going to be in big trouble getting back in the lead lap. Now here, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Jeff Ward is running in second position, but Giafoni is fourth. Yeah, and you feel third, I'm sorry. And you know, Giafoni has not finished worse than 10th all year long. That's an impressive feat for a rookie. He has been very, very impressive this year in his freshman year in the Indy Racing League. There we see Dare there in the uh, lime green car. Right behind him is Scott Sharp in sixth. And Billy Boat is not too far behind in the seventh position. But there is Greg Ray. And his advantage is two and a quarter seconds at the end of 104 laps over Ward. Then comes Giafoni, Hornish, and Dare. Keeping you up to speed on what happened during the commercial break. Not good news for Ayrton Dare. He was running in sixth position. He has led five laps of this race, but all of a sudden there was smoke from the back of the car. He immediately pulled to the inside, and Dare is out of the race. Vince? Mark Weida, the engineer for Ayrton Dare. You guys had been running so well up in the top ten again. Yeah, we had a, we had a great run going. It's been our strongest race all year, and we announced it. It's a shame we had a lot of folks from 1-800-BAR-NUN and classmates.com here to watch us this weekend, and uh, Ayrton was doing a great job. We, the boys had great pit stops, and uh, we're just 100 laps short. It's a team based here in Texas, hoping to do well again tonight. Not going to happen. But they were looking very, very good. On board with uh, Buddy Lazier here, as Buddy has the seventh position at the moment as we are under caution. He has been very quietly moving his way towards the front. He hasn't been splashy, but he's been hanging right in there. Well, Greg Ray has the lead of this race after starting in 20th position. His most famous memory, well, it was right here. You know, I think my favorite uh, indie racing moment of the last several years and it was in 1999 when we finished second at the Texas Motor Speedway in October and won the championship. Uh, you know, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, had all my friends, my family, my neighbors, business relatives, people I went to high school with, they were all there cheering. That was a magical night. 
days like that keep you motivated to uh, come back and get more of it. And is he in line for another victory here tonight? Well, we'll know in about 92 more laps. Ayrton Dare's car is still down at the uh, pit in, or rather pit out, near turn number one as the field remains under the caution. Yeah, they can't open the pits until they get him out of the way down there because he can't exit the pits until his, his race car is off of the racetrack. Well, RPM tonight, the nightly source for motorsports on television since 1996. You can get a recap of all the latest headlines from the world of motorsports. Weeknights with John Kernan at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Ayrton Dare, last year here at Texas, in his rookie year, started 20th and finished 10th. And then in the second race here at Texas last fall, he started 19th and finished 12th. And oh yeah, log on to rpm.espn.com. That's where you can get the latest news from the world of motorsports on your computer, rpm.espn.com. And the helicopter is leaving for Parkland Hospital, and on board is Davey Hamilton, who again was reported to be awake and alert. However, he was suffering some, from some foot and leg injuries, so they'll take him to Parkland and they will evaluate that situation. Here they come as the pits are open. And Greg Ray was cautioned about being easy on the gearbox coming in and coming out. He'll bring the field down. Second place, Jeff Ward, pits directly in front of Greg Ray. Now, according to Daryl Sapi, this will be their next to last stop for this 500-kilometer event. They have worked their fuel mileage. see that Greg Ray almost Woo. crashed getting out of the pits I don't know exactly what happened there but it looks like he broke the wheels loose and he gets <laughs> slight he had those safety guys running for cover in a hurry let me tell you <laughs> meanwhile Sam Hornish they decided to not take a full load of fuel so they could get out in the lead that's exactly what they did they took a half a tank of fuel and they did get the lead Wow now watch the cars come out here there goes Hornish here comes Greg Ray and look he, he <laughs> Just loses control there momentarily as he got on the gas, but still maintained control. Yeah, it looks, see, the thing almost died. It looks like he he, he just lit the tires up. Yep. Yep. He lit the tires up, and that thing headed for the inside. Everybody behind <laughs> him is kind of uh, saying, whoa, baby, I don't want to get in the middle of this. Sc safety workers scurrying like cockroaches in the kitchen when you turn the light on. <laughs> Jack? Well, Bob, remember now, all of those guys pit down towards turn number one, towards the end of where the pit speed limit is enforced. When Greg Ray got on the button, as they call it, he felt he was running at the mandated pit stop speed. He got on the horn after he almost crashed the car, and he said, how could those guys be going faster than me? I'm going the ultimate on the pit limit. <laughs> He's having trouble getting that thing revved up. He, he was having the bottom. <laughs> those guys, you know, he revved the thing up trying to get it going a couple times, but uh, when he caught a hold, it spun the wheels and uh, everybody trying to get out of his way. Sam Hornish is the leader, and Jason, I now know what cockroaches do when you turn on the light in the kitchen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Back at Texas Motor Speedway, the one incident tonight to Davey Hamilton has been airlifted to Parkland Hospital with uh, injuries to his lower extremities. Jared Schrader, one of the lucky ones that uh, walked away from it. Something let go in the back of the car is what it looked like on the replay. Did you have any indication it was coming? Uh, absolutely no indications. Uh, you know, the car was running real strong for us. We were just biding our time. But, uh, yeah, something definitely let go. We believe it's the motor. It felt like the motor. And uh, got some oil on the tires, and it turned us around. Disappointing uh, finish for Jared Schrader in his first ride of the season with TriStar Motorsports. Jack Aroot. Well, Vince, behind me is Mitch Davis, who leads the Heritage Motorsports team for Jeff Ward. Now, Ward is presently posted in the fifth position, directly in front of him, who also the man that provides the engines, John Menard's car with Greg Ray. There's been a conversation between Mitch Davis and John Menard just moments ago. They have determined that they are going to try and get Ray and Ward to hook up in a very tight draft. Say, if we stay together, we can blow by Sharp and the rest of these guys and start to pull away. They hope. <laughs> and that remains to be seen, but we will get back to racing here very, very shortly as the field is getting the one-to-go signal. Sam Hornish Jr. is the leader of the race. 
Then comes Giafoni, Ray, Ward, Sharp, Boat. Now, Eddie Cheever Jr., who lost the lap, remember, during his unscheduled pit stop, is back on the lead lap in 13. Vince is with Ayrton Dari. Well, initially, we reported, uh, as Mark Weida, the engineer, said that uh, an engine was the problem with Ayrton Dari, but Ayrton, evidently, that now not the case as your crew works on your car here in the garage. We, we thought that it was the engine because the car started to spin around and uh, kind of catch the rear. And when I came out of the car, I just figured out that the engine was running and then the, my right rear was locked. So it locked the right rear in the middle of the corner. So it may be a wheel bearing or something on the rotor. They're trying to fix that as quick as they can to come back there and get the points. Team really working feverishly on the race car here in the garage area, hoping to get back out here tonight. Indeed, the green comes out. We are back to racing at Texas Motor Speedway. And a good battle right off the bat for the third position as Ward as, and Ray hook up together. But who's going to be the one in front? I was going to say, somebody forgot to tell Ward about the plan. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled to the outside, tried to blow him away, going through that first corner. So, uh, there, and there goes Giafoni, oh, just yes. past Hornish. Felipe Giafoni goes to the inside of Sam Hornish, and Giafoni is going to oh, lead here at Texas. Keep going. Well, that's got to be quite a thrill for him. Now, look at Greg Ray on the inside of Sam Hornish as he takes over second, but uh, Ward could not follow him through there. Car behind, you got one. And this is only the second time that Felipe Giafoni has been in front of an Indy Racing car League car field. He led one lap at Miami, but he's not going to be there very long as Greg Ray comes around and retakes the position. And that idea about Ray and Ward hooking up, I don't think it's going to work. No, and look at Billy Boat back there right behind Ward. All of a sudden, he's found new legs, and he's chasing these guys down. Well, you remember what I said at the beginning of the race, Bob? It's anyone's race. You can say that again. In fact, with 117 laps completed, we've got 12 cars on the lead lap, and any one of those is capable of winning. There's Boat moving to the inside of Ward. Ward in the pink car, sponsored by Aerosmith, and of course, Billy Boat in the Curb Records machine. And Bob, you may wonder why didn't uh, Greg Ray decide to draft with Jeff Ward? I don't know for sure, but remember one thing about Greg Ray. He used to be a member of a two-car team. When there were rumblings that he might leave John Menard, he said, if you make it a one-car team, I'll stay. He doesn't <laughs> like to have friends on the racetrack. Look at Billy Boat. He's on the outside of Sam Hornish right now. Looks like he has a great run on him. Meanwhile, Sharp moves the inside. Two by two for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Right, you know, guys, Billy Boat really likes this track. He, he won here in 98. He finished second in 97. He finished third year in 2000. Obviously, he's real comfortable on this track. And he's running fourth right now behind Hornish. And guys, one of the problems that Sam Hornish's team was concerned about coming into this race was Sam's speed in the corners. They felt like the difference between his top speed and his slow speed on a particular lap was about four miles per hour, and they thought that was too much of a gap, so they weren't sure whether they had a winning car tonight. But as you see him go around Giafoni, it looked pretty good in the corner right there. Wow, Giafoni just got the pants scared off. I mean, he had to let out of the throttle because Hornish went right up in front of him, and when he did, he lost two spots, maybe three. Billy Boat buzzed around him also, and now here is Sharp to the inside of Boat, so Boat gains a position and then loses one to Scott Sharp, who's coming back up through the field. These guys battling each other every inch of the way all over the racetrack. That's what I mean, wheel to wheel. You have to concentrate so hard when you're running that close to anybody. Any slight error by any of the drivers is a disaster. And these guys have been able to do it here in Texas lap after lap. Got one inside, inside. Robbie Buell is back on pit road, by the way, and Didier Andre is sitting on pit road also. But the action is on the racetrack, and it is good stuff. Sharp has moved to second. Hornish is third. Then comes Ward and Boat, top five. And next time around, we'll check the speeds and see how fast everybody is going. Greg Ray with about a second and a half advantage on this battle here for the third position. Here's Guys, as you look at uh, Jeff Ward, they're trailing Sam Hornish across the line. This Ward team, partially owned by Texan John Meekham Jr., who was part of the winning effort at Indianapolis back in 1966, went on to start the NFL's New Orleans Saints. Meekham, his son John III, and the Jim Rathman family, all part of this team and aptly named Harris.
Heritage Motorsports, and they get a lot of support from John Menard as well. But Vince, the car that is on the move is Eddie Cheever Jr. He got his lap back during that caution. He's radioed in to Owen Snyder. The car feels good. I'm going back to the front. What a great story that would be for Owen Snyder. His daughter, Christy, 16 years old, has spent the last two weeks in the hospital with pneumonia. She just got out of the hospital today, so I know Owen wants to say hello to Christy. Glad that she's out of the hospital as that entire Cheever team wanted to wish uh, Christy Snyder well tonight. This is Scott Sharp's telemetry. You can see a speed of 217 miles an hour there at the end of the uh, front stretch. Clear. Passes a slower car with ease. He's using almost 98% throttle. He's being told on the radio that he is gaining on Greg Ray right now. And last lap, he was two mile an hour faster than Greg Ray. And Jack, uh, Scott Sharp is indeed a man on the move. And Scott Sharp is a man that was smiling about five minutes before the start of this race. Why? Because Tom Kelly had been absent throughout the weekend. He had a golf outing that he had to attend earlier today. He got on a jet in Florida, flew to Texas here, and Scott Sharp said, I need TK here. Why? Because Tom Kelly is the one that does all of the fuel strategy and all the pit strategy for the Delphi car of Scott Sharp. Got here with about five minutes to spare, fellas. Buzz Calkins is on pit road and they're taking the engine cover and the side pod off of the Bradley Foods car. Yeah, Bob, the engine just shut off going into the corner, we came back on and then clicked back off. So you know that's not a good problem or not a good situation for Buzz Calkins as they remove the side pods. Watching the battle for six, Giafoni inside and Eliseo Salazar outside and Salazar is gonna get the advantage here going into the corner and Salazar picks up the sixth spot and Dismore slows down Mark Dismore is coasting it would appear with very little power if any to pit road how much disappointment can Mark Dismore have it's been a tough tough uh, couple of weeks for him after Indianapolis I'm sure this has got to be devastating for him 70 laps to go. There's Jeff Ward and Sam Hornish running in third and fourth position. The leader of the race is Greg Ray, and indeed, his lead is shrinking because it was more than a second just a few laps ago, and now it's down to less than three quarters of a second. The advantage that Greg Ray has on car number eight, Scott Sharp, and the 35 of Jeff Ward. Just as you rejoin us here at Texas Motor Speedway, Scott Sharp makes a run on Greg Ray. This is the battle for the lead. We're on lap 137 of 200. Scott Sharp has been consistently one mile an hour faster than Greg Ray for the last seven or eight laps. He caught him. Now can he pass him? It's the Texas 500 for the Indy Racing League, the fifth race of the year. We have had seven different leaders and eight lead changes. With 63 laps to go, Cheever has led the most laps, 64. Greg Ray has been out front for 56 and counting, although Scott Sharp is right there behind him. A big accident in the race as Davey Hamilton, Jared Schrader, and Sarah Fisher were involved. Hamilton has been airlifted to check on some leg injuries. Now let's get an update on Mark Dismore. Mark Dismore's crew went to work with his car. They checked the throttle linkage. They knew that it was not the engine. What they did is they changed the spark marks, and you can hear behind me the car is refired. It's been a costly stop for Mark Dismore, but they are buttoning up the bonnet, and he will be going back out against Welch. Buzz Calkins had also come in, and they'd taken the side pot off working on it. The car had been misfiring, but they were somewhat confused as to why. So David Cripps's crew just changed all the electronics in the machine and sent the 12 car back out onto the course. Four straight top tens here at Texas for Calkins. It doesn't look like that'll be the case tonight. Right now he's in 17th position, 10 laps down. As the leader oh, comes up on slower traffic in a moment there for Greg Ray, and Scott Sharp squeezes between uh, Calkins in the wall. That's when you just head for that spot Clear. and you hope to heck those guys Good don't hear that because you, if you lift, you're going to lose too much ground. So you just have to go for it. Hope he's paying a lot of attention and, and doesn't move up in front of you. 
11 cars on the lead lap. We'll check the speeds at the line. How are the Avalanche doing, Jason? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, the Avalanche are up 3-0 on the New Jersey Devils. So all you hockey fans that are uh, watching us tonight, you're not missing anything over on ABC. Well, they are missing something here. These guys are really racing. Eddie Cheever is still outrunning everybody on the racetrack. He's back in eighth spot, but almost every lap, he's been the fastest car on the racetrack as he slowly tries to catch up with these guys. Here he is to the top side of Billy Boat in the battle for seventh position, and we'll check the speeds now. Right now, it is Sharp the fastest. We'll see if Cheever takes over that number one spot. Not that lap. Nope. He didn't. was involved in the battle with... Uh, with Billy, so uh, that probably lost a little bit of speed. You know, this, this is a great comeback for Eddie, though. He was, uh, you know, having to take that green flag pit stop, and having being put a lap down, and now to, to fight your way back to uh, where he's, he's now in the seventh position. He's doing a great time. Scott Sharp continuing to pursue Greg Ray as Dismore goes back out rather comes back in after putting some uh, more laps out there. The stories that we uh, had at the beginning of the race, we'll update them. The track continues to be bumpy, but yet has provided some great racing, as has the drafting. Greg Ray is the leader of the race. Dismore having problems. Scott Sharp very much in contention, and the A.J. Foyt boys are fifth and tenth at the moment. Beachler back in tenth, and Salazar currently fifth. Yeah, the pit stops have not been a problem as we thought they might be, but here's Eddie Cheever who's working his way steadily towards the front of this, uh, this group. Jr. won at Pikes Peak International Raceway last year, giving the Infinity its first victory, and we will go back there this coming Sunday for the Pikes Peak Indy 200. And you'll see it on ABC live at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 1 o'clock Pacific. And Cheever is now up to fifth spot as he passes Giafoni. And he's still very, very fast. He may not be the fastest guy every lap, but the last lap he was once again. He's, he's out by himself, and when he's on the inside of the racetrack, he is still the fastest guy out there. When he's running that outside groove, it slows him down just enough to sometimes uh, Sharp and Ray are a little faster than he is. Here, guys, Mark Dismore just pulled his car back behind the wall, so it looks like the end to a frustrating evening for the Kelly team and for Mark Dismore. Guys, when Eddie Cheever eventually comes upon the car in front of him, at least on the uh, scoring pylon, that's Sam Hornish Jr. Don't expect Hornish Jr. to provide much opposition for Cheever. His crew just said, we don't really even have a top 10 car, but we've had such good pit stops, we've been able to keep him in the top five. But as far as the car is concerned, it's certainly not one of their better ones. Remember, Eddie Cheever Jr. restarted in 12th position, but he was actually 18th in line on the track. He restarted behind all the lap cars as well. So a phenomenal performance here by Eddie Cheever. And if it hadn't been for that uh, flat tire that he had that required him to make an unscheduled pit stop, he could very well be out in front of this event. Yeah, he's still, uh, he's still gaining on the leaders, but he just got so far back in the pack, had so many cars to get around, that it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, they still have one more pit stop to make, though, at least. So uh, he's still in the race. He still can win this thing. He's about eight and a half seconds behind the leader, Greg Ray, as 150 laps are now completed. 50 to go at Texas Motor Speedway. And we go okay. back up front, and we see that uh, it's still pretty much the same. Greg Ray has the advantage, but by not very much, over Scott Sharp. Interval is varied from two tenths of a second to three tenths, and that is just about it. Eleven cars on the lead lap. Allenzer Jr. is the last driver on the lead lap. Donnie Beachler is running in tenth position. That's Sarah Fisher you see back there also. She, needless to say, is back in the race, although 24 laps down and shown 19th. Well, these guys can pit any time now and make it to the end of the race. They all claim that they were getting at least 2.2 miles per gallon. That's what you have to get in order to run 50 laps around this racetrack. So we've reached 150, one more pit stop, and they should be good to go. And Larry, we hear that the leader, Greg Ray, is going to make a pit stop in four more laps. So it'll be interesting to see if Scott Sharp will come along with him or whether he will pit early or late. 
Well, they, they can actually go another eight or nine laps before they have to pit. If I were sharp, I'd probably stay out there hoping for a yellow and hoping I get a huge advantage on Greg Ray if he pits early. Well, Larry, that is the strategy right now for Scott Sharp. He has been told to pit in approximately nine laps. And it'll be interesting to see it when Greg Ray pulls in if it's under green, if the Delphi crew follows suit with Sharp. Larry, this is just phenomenal. Eddie Cheever now battling Sam Hornish for fourth. I think that we are seeing without question that this 35A is a very powerful engine. This is going to be a great race only because he had a lousy luck to have to make a pit stop, let me tell you. Because by the end, he is going to be up there. And if Greg Ray wants to win this race, or Scott Sharp, they're going to have to contend with him. Well, guys, Scott Sharp, we were just talking about the stops and whether or not Sharp would indeed come in when Ray does. They're still figuring that one out. Sharp's team, as Robert Perez told me just a moment ago, they know they've got a car capable of winning, but they're not quite sure when they want to make that pit stop. If they want to follow Ray in or stay out a little longer. Well, it's a very tough decision. That's why you have so much strategy. Oh, and a caution comes out, and this is going to allow everybody to make a pit stop at the same time. There's debris on the racetrack. Slow it down, guys. Slow it down, guys. And it comes at a very opportune time, Larry. Well, it certainly does. For most, for most of these guys, it's going to be a big break to uh, get this yellow and get to go in and make a yellow flag pit stop instead of a green flag pit stop. Uh, you don't know. So if the strategy had been good, it might. this might be a bad break for uh, Scott Sharp. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, though, Larry, that just made the decision for them. When that yellow came out, the crew started clapping hands, and over the wall they went to put the tires on the ground and get ready for the eight car of Scott Sharp. Well, later tonight on ESPN, it's SportsCenter. Hosts John Anderson and Rich Eisen bring you all today's highlights and news. Later tonight, SportsCenter. And for more, you can log on to ESPN.com. So Greg Ray now falls in behind the pace car as we take a look at the fastest laps run in this race. Let's see, Greg Ray has a couple of them. Dismore has two. Cheever has a couple. And Scott Sharp has three of the top ten fastest laps here tonight. And oddly enough, those are the three guys that have been, you know, pretty much in the hunt here the last uh, 20 or 30 laps. It looks like they've got the best chance to win this race. By the way, as the cars go around the racetrack, you'll notice some light areas on the surface. That's where the track has been milled down to make it much smoother, and it is really uh, a lot smoother than it has been, and they are going to repave this track right after this race. Okay, Cheever's guys are out. Watch for him, but look for John. Dismore's no longer a factor. Here we go. Five, Watch Ray and four, Sharp. Three, two, one, right now. Daryl Soppy has told Scott, has told Greg Ray to do exactly what he just did, point the nose back out towards the racetrack, because directly in front of him is the man that is in Sharp beat him out, and man, there was a near collision. And look at this, nearly a second difference in their pit stops. Boy, and guys, the uh, Sharp Kelly Racing Team celebrating down here in the pits. They believe they may have just won the race for their driver, Scott Sharp. And they may be right. We'll be right back. Reveal the Indy the All Access Sweepstakes Driver of the Day. Hi, I'm Scott Sharp from Carmel, Indiana. I'm the Indy All Access Sweepstakes Driver of the Day. For your chance to win a ride in an Indy car and a trip to next year's Indianapolis 500, log on to ESPN.com, keyword Indy Pass. Fill out an entry form and include the name of the Driver of the Day. One entry with the correct answer will be selected at random as this week's winner. Ready to go back to racing here at Texas Motor Speedway. There are the top five. The driver of the day, Scott Sharp, is the leader of the race. He has led in six of the eight IRL races that have been conducted here, and he is the eighth different leader tonight. There you see that Sharp gained a position in the pit stops, going from second to first. And Cheever lost the position. Now we're taking a look at Greg Rays. He's going to take a shot at Scott Sharp. Scott Sharp put on sticker tires. They hadn't run any so far. They told him to be a little careful. So he wants to keep the lead, but he doesn't want to do anything silly like happened in Indianapolis. That's Jeff Ward back there in third position. Cornish is in fourth spot, and then comes Cheever. 
And now Cheever's right in the hunt. He's right in that mix. The first five cars all nose to tail. And you can see right now, Greg Ray is looking for a way to get around and get back in that lead. It looks to the outside here in the trioval. Oh, very close wheel to wheel action in turn number one. That's enough to take your breath away. Wow, that is close. Look at this, these guys <laughs> running side by side. Remember, this is the way this race finished last year with Scott Sharp winning. Greg Ray seems to have a little advantage. Oh, look how close they are. At the line, Greg Ray led that lap by a few inches, but Scott Sharp battles back on the inside. And Scott Sharp is saying to himself, am I gonna have to do this again like I did last year with Robbie McGee? <laughs> Sharp has the shortest way around the racetrack, so he gets an advantage going through the corners, and then down the straightaway, Ray seems to have more straightaway speed. Look at Eddie Cheever, though. He comes up and joins the mix. He's right there in fourth position, and you can throw a blanket over the top five. And this is when these guys really earn their money. Look how close those guys come. They're only inches apart going through that corner, and if they touch, it's disastrous. And Sam Hornish is right back there, too. Oh, look wheel at this. Wheel side by side. Sharp moved up just slightly, and Greg Ray had to move over to keep from making contact. And the Texas race fans, and this track draws a great crowd for IRL races. They are on their feet and loving it. Cheever now is up to third. I'm standing up, and I don't even have a seat. <laughs> Cheever now is going to be the guy they're going to have to contend with. I think both those guys up there know he's been fast all day long, and if he finds a way to get underneath you, you're going to be in big trouble because he's going to take the spot away. Won't this be a story if Cheever is able to win this race? But let's not count out Sam Hornish as he now begins to show some muscle there in the Pennzoil Panther car. Remember, this team won the final race of the year last year here at Texas with Scott Sharp in the cockpit. And you know, guys, I'm sorry, Scott Goodyear. You've also got uh, Jeff Ward sitting back there in fifth yep. place just watching all this unfold. You can't count him out either. All of this in excess of 215 miles an hour. Last time by, the fastest car on the racetrack was Eddie Cheever at 216.076. Greg Ray still can't get around Scott Sharp, but he's got his mirror full of gray from Eddie Cheever. Ooh, wow. And Cheever's just trying to find someplace. He wants him to go to the outside so he can sneak down under him and maybe get the advantage, but he just can't get up there quick enough. Boy, these guys, when you're running this close, you really they have to take some chances. And we hear this so much in stock car racing, but they are now racing faster than they qualified. They're racing at 216.3, and it's simply because of the draft. Get that draft going. Everybody, the wind gets moving, and you get it out of the way. Everybody can run a little bit quicker. But look at this. Now then, Cheever has the inside line, but he can't take advantage of it. Or can he? Oh, wow. Look at how close they are. This is unreal. The word from Parkland Hospital is that uh, Davey Hamilton has fractures of the lower extremities. That's all we know. He is awake and alert. Oh, mercy! And Greg Ray may have him this time as they head down for turn number one. Nope, Scott battles back. And look how the, you're just like so close. Every time they do that, I expect to see a little blue smoke come up, but it didn't happen that time. It looks like Greg Ray might actually have. No, he doesn't have him. <laughs> At the end of the straightaways, every time, Greg Ray takes the advantage, but then through the corner, Scott Sharp is able to pull back in front. Oh, did you see there? Eddie Cheever just touched up on the grass on the bottom. That was almost disastrous. You can see Greg Ray's car getting a little loose coming through there as, as, as the, in the, when, the, when he's caught in the turbulent air. Boy, this is exciting. <laughs> well. Red Ray's car runs faster down the straightaway, but when he gets on the outside through the corner, it's just enough farther around the outside, he can't make it. And look at that, Cheever tried to stick his nose in there, and, Cheever, and Ray says, no, you don't. Guys, it's hard to believe the all the intense racing that's going on. Eddie Cheever still has time to talk on the radio. He just radioed in and said, guys, I'm so, so thirsty, I'd drink horse. Uh, <laughs> yes, he would. Yeah, uh, <laughs> team manager Dick Karen said, I'll try to wrestle you some up. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, oh. fast lap cars. That was Robbie McGee they just passed. He's, he's familiar with this battle, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He was up front a year ago at this time, but unfortunately tonight he's back in 15th, some six laps down. Now, Cheever goes.
goes. Whoa, oh, they're going to go three wide. And oh, Cheever. Oh, he had to get on the brakes. Oh, my God. He lost third spot. He had to get on the brakes. He was clear below the white line. Now he loses another spot. Outside. So Cheever drops back to fifth position. I thought he was going to crash. And here well, comes Jeff outside. Ward, guys. Unbelievable. Well, if you want to win races, you have to take chances. He took a chance. It didn't work. But he's still got enough laps to go to get back around outside. these guys. Maybe. 26 left to go. There's Jeff Ward, and Vince told you about the Heritage Motorsports team and John Meekham, one of the better-known businessmen in the state of Texas, for that matter. John Meekham III is part owner of this car, along with Jim Rathman, Jr., the son of the 1960 winner of the Indy 500, and Ward is right in the thick of things, watching Sharp and Ray battle it out. Guys, one of the uh, men that must be most proud tonight is the engine builder for John Menard, and that's Butch Meyer. He builds the engines for both Greg Ray and Jeff Ward, and to see those two drivers battling it out with Scott Sharp for the lead, pretty proud oh. moment as they almost start again. And Cheever, meanwhile, has passed Sam Hornish, and Cheever's back up to fourth. And now we'll make another run at him. And he's closing pretty quick, quickly on Jeff Ward. It's only a matter of time before he's up with the leaders. I'm not sure whether this is... This is Trust or desperation these guys are going through here. Oh, yeah. Close are coming every single lap. You know, I've, I've never been a race driver and really have never wanted to be. But I, I love watching this so much, and I'm amazed at the drivers. Every one of them, when they pull in tonight, will say, man, that was fun. And I'm thinking, I'd die of a heart attack doing this out there. <laughs> and look how close that right there. Left rear, right rear to left front. That couldn't have been more than two inches. They missed each other. And here comes Eddie Cheever back into third once again. <laughs> now, the lap traffic is the best chance for these guys to move. We see a car up there that they're going to lap pretty quickly, so now's the best chance for these guys in second and third to get around Scott Sharp. And you know, guys, this battle that we're seeing up front, this is a battle between the IRL's most prolific winners. These guys are both going for win number six. A little bit of pride on the line, too, I think. You are right, Greg Ray, when he won at Atlanta earlier this year, tied Scott Sharp for most wins in the IRL five. So one of them could become the all-time winningest driver here tonight. Hey, but it's all about bragging rights when you're down in the paddock, Bob. Well, that's right. I think Greg Ray fell back and followed him for a while just so he could breathe for a couple of laps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, buddy, back in your mirrors. And Cheever is back within three, four car lengths of Greg Ray. Well, Greg, I think, has... Uh, I was going to say he has uh, rested long enough and is now ready to go back up there and do battle with Scott. Well, well we've, we've got now less than 20 laps to go. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. And just as you rejoin us, the caution comes out, and Jeff Ward, who is running in fourth position, has a lot of smoke coming from the rear end of that car, and that is a true shame for Jeff, who was up in the fourth position in the Aerosmith-sponsored car from Heritage Motors. Yeah, I don't think it's the motor. It felt like it may have been the motor. Well, uh, he told me that during this time off... Come on in here, we'll take a look at it. Come on in here, we'll take a look at it. During this time off, between the last race and this one, he actually went to Boston and went to an auction that Earl Smith has every year for charity up there and participated in that. And, uh, said that was a lot of fun. Well, it gives us a little bit of a breather here from intense racing action involving about five cars. Scott Sharp is going to be the leader of this race. And Greg Ray in second position. So Scott Sharp looking to make it number two here at Texas Motor Speedway. There is Eddie Cheever Jr. and now he is All running right, in third Lance position. The They're coming out the tailpipe right side. Don't worry about it. We're watching camps. Sam Hornish is, was reporting there was a fire. That's the reason we took a lap look at him. It was obviously just out of the exhaust. Well, Scott Sharp couldn't ask for more memories that he has had here tonight in his incredible battle with Greg Ray, but let's find out what his most memorable IRL event was. It would have to be the Texas race last year that I won. I mean, it was just a, just a thrilling race to be a part of. I mean, it was I was on the edge of my seat, and at times I was just freaking because you were waiting for this huge accident to happen. It obviously never did, but you, know, you go from seventh to third, back to fifth, all in one lap. There's just so much jockeying around, drafting, because playing such a huge factor. Scott Sharp gets the advantage and comes down and wins it. Wow! So that's definitely my favorite memory. 
hope I don't have to use my excited voice tonight for another call like that. But in, on, on the other hand, it would be kind of cool. Something tells me you're going to have to, Bob. <laughs> It seems very apropos that you would run that IRL memory right at this moment, <laughs> fellas, because Scott Sharp was just told on the radio, remember last year, you did it once. It's your turn to do it this time again. 15 laps to go at Texas Motor Speedway. We will have 12 laps of racing when the green comes out next time around to settle this here at Texas. We will go commercial free now till the end of the race unless there is a caution. Well, let's bring in Jack Aroot here for uh, an observation from the pits. Well, actually, it's what Daryl Soppy just told Greg Ray. He told Greg, get him on the restart. It's going to be your best opportunity. Ray told him he has been unable to pass him on the outside. He says, well, you've got more power on the start. Let's see what happens. Indeed, let's see what happens as the green comes out and Scott Sharp gets a decent uh, restart. And look at Eddie Cheever. Cheever is going to take second from Greg Ray at the line. Well, this looks like Ray didn't do what they said, and Cheever obviously was on the ball. Now then, he's got second position. It may be a shootout between, well, I think it's going to be a three-way shootout myself. <laughs> <Yeah. myself. laughs> Who knows right now? <laughs> but those three have certainly moved out a few car lengths ahead of Sam Hornish, who's back and forth position. Scott Sharp. Eddie Cheever and Greg Ray. Cheever goes for the lead on the high side. Look at this, three abreast. No way, this is going to work. Yes, it did. And Greg Ray takes the lead, and Cheever had to get out of the throttle once again. That was exactly what Greg Ray needed. He knew he could not pass on the outside. They'd been discussing it. He said, if the door could open on the inside, I've got more power. Look what happened. When was the last time you saw Indy-style race cars going through a corner three abreast at 215 miles an hour for the lead? And make it. And All make three it. Of them made it. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible, but by golly, they did. Nine laps to go with Greg, Lee, Greg Ray now in the lead and Scott Sharp looking for a way around. That that was the boldest move I've seen here tonight. Three abreast, and he didn't run himself down into the infield. Like, oh, look at oh. this. Oh, that's sharp. Talking about running him into the infield. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> that's that white car we were talking about earlier, guys. Yep. Eight laps to go now. Here comes Eddie Cheever yep. again to get back in the hunt. Well, it's going to be very difficult to pass the leader. He's got the racetrack. You're going to have to go somewhere where he's not. Brian Barnhart has told him before he's not going to stand for blocking, but uh, boy, when you're leading a race, it's hard not to protect that position. Just while we watch these top three, let me tell you about some other guys we haven't seen a lot tonight, but are doing great. Giafoni's in fifth, Beachler sixth, Buddy Lazier seventh, Billy Boat in eighth, then Salazar and Allenser Jr. complete the top ten. Jock Lazier has had a good race in the 11th position. Shige Hattori has had a good race, although he's been in and out of the pit several times. He's in 12th position. Robbie McGee, six laps down in 14th as they continue to run the same way on the racetrack. Greg Ray, Scott Sharp, and we're on board with Eddie Cheever. It's 3-1 Avalanche at the end of the second period. If you're coming over here and watching our race, we have an incredible race on our hands. It's a three-way shootout for the lead with less than six laps to go. They have just told Car 2 to call Brian Barnhart just what I said. They warned him about blocking. Evidently, they're going to warn him again about blocking. Five laps to go. Brian Barnhart, the vice president of operations for the Indy Racing League, who oversees the on-track activity. Oh, look at that! Oh! Oh! Oh, oh the and lap Ray car. Ray and Eddie Cheever are both involved. And I don't know who the third car was that Greg Ray went to the inside of down the back stretch. Looks like the lap car moved way to the inside to try to get out of the way. Greg Ray was just way too fast and already committed to go to the inside, and they made contact. Robbie McGee. That's Robbie McGee. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Well, what? Greg Ray is moving around and taking off the steering wheel. So is Eddie Cheever. Well, you got two disappointed race car drivers right there, guys. What an onboard shot we had. Everybody here in the booth ducked. And I'm sure you did at home because we were right with Eddie Cheever when he made hard contact with 
one of the cars. I don't know which one it was. And you can see the disappointment of Greg Ray. He's just hanging his head down, talking to himself. There's Greg's wife. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, he has certainly gotten by with what I feel like is one of the bravest moves I've seen here at Texas Motor Speedway when he went three abreast. And then he got caught up with the lap car, and it was just a tough break. He was so committed, so much faster than McGee. McGee tried to move down, but he, it was too late, and he was already down there. Down to Vince. With a disappointed John Menard. John, uh, first of all, Jeff Ward's car was running so strong, and it went out with a wheel bearing, and now this incident with Greg. Yeah, it's, it's too bad. We had a strong car, and, you know, four laps to go makes you, makes you feel bad, but that's racing. Uh, we'll be back, and uh, we'll get him at Pike's Peak, I guess. So exciting tonight, wheel to wheel. Was Greg give, giving any indication of the uh, thrill out there? Well, I think Greg was pretty busy just paying attention. He wasn't saying much on the radio, but I don't know if he was half excited as I was here in the pits. I mean, that was quite a race going on there. It's too bad it had to end this way. What a disappointment for Greg Ray. He's out of the car and obviously very disappointed. Here is a replay of what happened. Take a look at Greg Ray. Look at this. He's way down on the inside. He tried to move back up the racetrack. He thought he was around Robbie McGee, but he clipped his left front with his right rear. And, of course, Eddie Cheever was just a victim of circumstances. Here it is once again. There's the contact. And right into the path of Eddie Cheever goes Robbie McGee. And, oh, boy, did Scott Sharp get lucky to get through there unscathed. Yep. Hey, it's better be lucky than good a lot of days. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take, I'd rather, I'd rather be lucky than good any day, Larry. <laughs> oh, there's the in-car camera from Greg Ray. Oh, heavy contact with the wall. And this race could end under caution. There's a lot of debris out there on the backstretch, and there are now less than three laps to go. Well, it's just a terrible, terrible break. Like I said, he had a big run on, on McGee. He committed to the bottom. McGee moved to the bottom, trying to stay out of his way. But as he went around, it just looked like Greg Ray moved up just a split second before he should have, and uh, that's what caused the crash. Jack, what did Scott Sharp, how did he react to all this? Well, he did exactly what Jason Priestley predicted, fellas. He got on the radio and he said, I didn't see it. What happened? They tried to describe what occurred and he said, boy, I dodged a bullet there, didn't I? Cheever runs back to the uh, pit area. And here is the onboard with Cheever. This is what we were on live. Jason knew it was going to happen, and he still ducked that time. <laughs> well, it's a terrible, terrible break oh. for both uh, Eddie Cheever and Greg Ray. Uh, they, that, this was going to be one heck of a shootout down to the end, but uh, not now. That's one of those things that just sort of ingrained in you, Bob. If you, if you ever drive race cars, you, yep. you, you've seen. You, I, I've seen many things like that. I know Larry has as well on a track where you're you just you're just sort of along for the ride. And, and uh, you know you do duck. I mean, I, I, in GT cars, I used to duck when things used to happen. Wow. <laughs> Here is the onboard from Greg Ray. There's the contact that sent him spinning across the racetrack and then, boom, hard into the outside wall. And on that same angle, you saw Scott Sharp just barely get by without getting tagged. Jack has more on Scott Sharp. Well, just moments ago, the radio got very animated between their crew and Scott Sharp. The crew said, oh, make sure you don't pass the pace car. All radioed back was, I don't think that's funny. <laughs> We've seen uh, Eddie Cheever and Greg Ray out of their cars. Robbie McGee, however, is still in his car, and that's down uh, just off of corner number four, so this race is going to end under caution. That's too bad because we had hoped for a battle to the end, but uh, our concern right now is the condition of Robbie McGee as Greg Ray walks back to the pit area. So Scott Sharp is going to win his sixth race and indeed become the all-time winningest driver in the Indy Racing League. Well, I think Scott Sharp will be real happy with this result, obviously winning the race, but uh, I don't think this is quite the way that he wanted to do it. Well, this was a tough, tough night uh, for a lot of these guys, but believe me, this was some of the toughest, tightest racing you're going to see anywhere in the country. being led down the back stretch by the Oldsmobile pace car. So Scott Sharp celebrates the anniversary of his victory here last year yep. uh, by another victory. And Bob Jenkins, I want to thank you for spending your anniversary, your 33 <laughs> well, wedding, 33rd you, wedding anniversary with all of us here at ABC. We all thank wish you. you a very happy anniversary to you and your lovely wife. Thank you very much. 
number 33. Scott Sharp will lead Sam Hornish, Felipe Giafoni, Buddy Lazier, and Donnie Beachler across the line Donnie, to complete Donnie, 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 the Texas Five. You are the man. Good job, dude. Good job, brother. Well, he certainly did earn his victory. had to be one of the most disappointing racing days of his entire career. Almost two weeks ago at Indianapolis, as the pole sitter, he crashes in turn one of the first lap. He comes back with a vengeance and wins the Texas 500. Tom Kelly, the car owner for Scott Sharp, the winner in Texas tonight. Last at Indy, first in Texas. Not a bad turnaround. Vince, it was a great night. I, I got to tell JT Battenberg, I played in a golf tournament with him in Detroit today and flew down here. I'm sorry we didn't win the golf tournament, but JT, we won the race. <laughs> there you go. Back to back in Texas in this uh, June race for Tom Kelly and the Kelly Racing Team and driver Scott Sharp. Victory number six. And there is Robbie McGee being loaded onto the stretcher, but gives a wave to the crowd as he is loaded in. So he appears to be awake and alert. We hope that he doesn't have serious injuries. Now, Scott Sharp is taking another victory lap, and while he's doing that, we'll show you the complete rundown. There are the top 10. Beachler finishes fifth. Salazar, seventh for A.J. Foyt. Allenser Jr. and Jacques Lazier finish eighth and ninth after being down a lap. Greg Ray and Eddie Cheever Jr. end up finishing 11th and 12th, but that certainly doesn't indicate in any way their great performance here tonight, and Jeff Ward comes home 16th. Scott Sharp finally completes his victory laps. <laughs> is rather happy in the cockpit as they prepare to push his car into victory lane. I'll tell you, Bob, there's no greater feeling in the world. Down to Vince Welch. Well, before the show tonight, we talked about uh, A.J. Foyt's team with Donnie Beachler and Aliseo Salazar working with just one pit crew and some throw-ins. You guys did pretty good. Donnie, your fifth, Aliseo seven. Not too bad. Yeah, we got a real good start on that last restart. And... Uh, it was a good race. I didn't have the best race car, but AJ fine-tuned it for me during the race, and we we did what we could with what we had. Uh, we didn't have a winning race car, but uh, we had a fifth-place car, and uh, my guys did a wonderful job. You know, the pit stops were so critical, and uh, with my uh, rookie team, uh, they did a great job. I'm very happy for them. Now, you told me before the race it depended on how you fared today as to whether you thought you might get a shot at uh, Colorado with AJ. You think you deserve it? Yeah, we probably ought to go put fuel in the motorhome. <laughs> That's Donnie Beachler. Jack Aroot. Well, the Delphi team all over Scott Sharp's car as he's been pulled into victory lane, and he is ready to get out of the car, getting the congratulations of the, of the, of the team here. Cuz, get behind the car. Let's get Scott Sharp. Let's see if we can get a word from Scott. Scott, worst to first. Now you got to be over Indianapolis. I tell you, um, Jack, you know, I put all my faith and trust in the man upstairs, and I... On that lap, said, why? You know, turn one, India, I could have fallen out 33rd a lot of the ways out of Indianapolis. And I just kept my faith and just thanked him for all the opportunity. I knew there's a reason for it. Maybe I still don't know what it is, but I've kept my faith and trusted him. I tell you, these Delphi guys, they got me out with the pits first. They put us in the lead. Tom and uh, Jeff and everyone did great calls all day. I mean, Spotter did his job. He earned his bucks today. Yeah, let's talk about that Spotter because lap after lap after lap, you and Greg Ray, hub to hub, it looked like deja vu all over again from last year. It was tough. Uh, you know, we were got. I, I was waiting to hit him a couple times because he tightened up on me and my car was sliding a little bit. And then at the end, I got so busy worrying about Eddie, and uh, I was sort of relying on my spotter. And I guess Greg just got a great shot underneath me, and I was like, oh no. And so I went into the corner in second behind Greg, and I just once again said, oh well, uh, whatever you want, man. Upstairs, you, you lead the way. Next thing I know, carnage everywhere is able to dive through, and we won the race. All right, let me ask you, this win versus last year's win, which is sweeter? <laughs> well, after Indianapolis, I think you know the answer to that, Jack. <laughs> Vince? I'll tell you what, Sam Hornish, who finished second tonight, has got to be smiling as well. Not only does he retain his lead in the point standings, but the team said there's no way this was a top five car tonight, and you brought it in runner-up. Yeah, the Penzo Panther guys did an awesome job at the pits, and I think that's what a championship uh, quality team is made out of going out there being able to take a second when you have a, a car that's you know going to finish second or even worse than that so we were, we were real happy with how everything went they did an awesome job in the pits got me the lead kept me in contention all night long and uh, 
move on to the next race. As we watched the television uh, monitors of uh, the racing out there, it was unbelievably exciting. How about from your position in the cockpit? Boy, was it. Uh, you know, I didn't really have a strong enough car to, to contend with them, but I was just trying to stay in the pack with them, uh, watch them dice it out, and I figured, you know, running here in fourth place and the way those guys were dice, and I figured I might end up winning the, winning the race if I was just patient, but, uh, you know. We took what we could get today, and uh, we're pretty happy with that. Absolutely. Second place for Sam Hornish, Bob. Sam Hornish Jr. continues to lead the point standings by 35 over Aliseo Salazar. Scott Sharp is up one, Giafoni down one, and Buddy Lazier moves up two in the point standings. The Texas 500 for the Indy Racing League on ESPN Speed World is being brought to you by... Frost Brewed Coors Light, to remind you the three most important words are, hey, beer man. By Firestone, America's tire since 1900, dedicated to making it right. By Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile dealers. And by Pennzoil, protection under the toughest driving conditions. Felipe Giafone driving for the Treadway Hubbard team in the top 10 of every race this season. The leader, runaway leader for the Rookie of the Year standings, third tonight. What a great run. Yeah, man, I'm really happy uh, for today. It's just my, my car was really good. I knew it wasn't very, very strong for the, for the qualifying, but I knew we, we had a good race car. I was just, I mean, I'm just no more happy just because, I mean, Hornish, I think he didn't play very fair out there. I mean, I almost went to, to the wall twice, you know. I mean, once he pushed me to the inside, the other he pushed me to the outside. And you, and you said maybe Hornish uh, passed you under the yellow, is that right? Yeah, then at the end, I mean, I passed him uh, in the last lap, and then when I saw all the smoke and everything, we both back off. But uh, what happened, I mean, we both back off, and then we had like a free track, and he went back to the troller and passed me all the way in, in uh, turn three. Mm. Keep an eye on that uh, official finish. Bob Jenkins? Felipe Giafoni, five races and five top ten finishes for the rookie. Not too bad for a freshman here in the Indy Racing League. They're the top ten in the Texas 500. Scott Sharp wins it. Well, it was a great battle for the win. Scott Sharp take us. Texas will be in Pikes Peak next Sunday. Next Sunday. At Colorado Springs, it's the Pikes Peak Indy 200 on ABC at 4 o'clock Eastern. Coming up next, baseball tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.